everyone welcome to mathematically inclined we are discussing part 3 of tangents and normals you can check out part 1 and 2 by clicking at the i button or finding the link in the description box below now in today's video we are going to cover the questions on orthogonal curves and few sample paper and tricky questions you can now follow me on my facebook page you can find the link down below also feel free to send in your queries on this email id or contact on this number and now let's get started so beginning with orthogonal curves so two curves are said to be orthogonal or in other words two curves are said to be cutting at right angles if the angle between their tangents is 90 degrees let's see how we use this concept in the questions so orthogonal curves as discussed whose tangents are cutting at right angles now look at the question it says show that these two curves cut at right angles if k square is equal to 512 now the language of the question is slightly ambiguous as most of the students end up using this condition and prove that the tangents are at 90 degrees however it is to be done the other way round so that means we will get the tangents to the curve use that they are already orthogonal or cutting at right angles and in the process prove that k square is 512 so taking the first curve and differentiating with respect to x both sides we get 4 is equal to 2y into dy by dx which gives us dy by dx is 2 by y similarly for the other curve 4xy is equal to k now differentiating with respect to x this requires your product rule so it will be 1 into y plus x into dy by dx is 0 which gives us dy by dx as minus y by x please note these derivatives do not have any meaning until there is a point of contact which when you substitute it gives you the slope of the tangent now the big question is how do we arrive at that point of contact and it's very simple you know if you have two curves which are cutting at right angles that means there are two curves which are cutting this way at probably that means if we consider these to be two curves point of contact will also be the point of intersection of these two curves so we are going to solve these two equations simultaneously to get that point so for this one i can replace my 4x with y square so this becomes y cube is k which means y is cube root of k and substituting the value here we get x is y square by 4 that means k is to power 2 by 3 by 4 so point of intersection of two curves is k raised to power 2 by 3 whole upon 4 and k raised to power 1 by 3 once we have got this now the slope for the slope we are going to substitute these values and let's say i call this as m1 is going to be 2 upon k raised to power 1 by 3 <coughs> and from here if i call this as m2 it's going to be minus k raised to power 1 by 3 upon k raised to power 2 by 3 and this 4 can be taken here it's recommended that you do not solve this because it would be taken care of as we proceed further so as the curves cut at right angles or are orthogonal therefore m1 into m2 will be equal to minus 1 let's substitute the values this implies 2 upon k raised to power 1 by 3 Into minus k raised to power one by three into four upon k raised to power two by three should be equal to minus one. Now further, all we need to do is simplify to arrive at this condition. So I can very clearly cancel out these k raised to power one by three. This gives us eight is equal to k raised to power two by three. Now we will cube both sides. Now on cubing we get a cube is equal to k square, which is nothing but 512 is equal to k square, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove. 
Again, a very similar question. Find the value of P for which the curves which are represented this way cut each other at right angles. Once again, we are going to use the condition of two orthogonal curves and find the unknown. Okay, so if we begin with your curve 1 and differentiate both sides with respect to x, this is what we get. That means your dy by dx happens to be minus 2x upon 9p. Similarly, for the next curve, which is x square is equal to p into y plus 1, again on differentiating, we get 2x is equal to p into dy by dx, which gives us dy by dx as 2x by p. Once again, let's get the point of contact, which happens to be the point of intersection of these two curves. So solving these two simultaneously by equating them, this becomes 9p into 9 minus y is equal to p times y plus 1. Now I'm cancelling these p's on the pretext they cannot be equal to 0. Because if they are at, because if they are equal to 0, then we get the curves to be x squared equal to 0 and, and the question really doesn't have any meaning. So on cancelling this becomes that means y is equal to 8 and now you can substitute this y as 8 anywhere. Let's say in the second curve, so your x square becomes p into 9. That means your x is plus minus 3 into under root p. So we get two points of contact over here. So our point of intersection becomes plus minus 3 root p comma 8. So let's get your m1 and m2 accordingly. So at the point plus root 3p comma 8, our m1 over here becomes minus 2 into 3 root p upon 9p, which gives us minus 2 by 3 root p. Similarly, your m2 now becomes, which gives us 6 by root p. Now, Using the condition of orthogonality, we get m1 into m2 is equal to minus 1, which implies minus 2 upon 3 root p into 6 upon root p should be equal to minus 1. So, simplifying this further, this gives us 4 by p is equal to 1, which gives us p is equal to 4. But we haven't finished yet. We have to find P with respect to the next point also. So at minus 3 root P comma 8, our M1 again, our M1 now becomes minus 2 into minus 3 root P upon 9 P, which gives us 2 upon 3 root P. Similarly, talking of your M2, it would be 2 into minus 3 root p upon p which gives us minus 6 by root p. Once again, making use of the condition m1 into m2 is minus 1 which means 2 upon 3 root p into minus 6 upon root p is minus 1. You again end up getting p as 4. So please note whether you use this point or the other one, your p is equal to 4 from both the cases. Let's move to the next segment of this video where I have few important, tricky and board based questions for you. Now these questions are going to be a mix of whatever we have done in tangents and normals so far. So would request you people to revise the previous two parts if you haven't done that so far. So looking at the first question, for the given curve, find all points at which the tangent passes through origin. That means this tangent line is passing through origin. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that origin or 0, 0 is actually the point of contact. Let's see how we tackle this. So first of all, let's assume let x0, y0 be the point of contact. If I consider the curve, 
You know this x naught y naught first of all is going to satisfy the curve. So this also implies y naught is going to be 4x naught cube minus 2x naught raised to power 5. I can mark this as equation 1 to be used later. Now differentiating this we get dy by dx is 12x square minus 10x raised to power 4. So slope of the tangent will be 12 x naught square minus 10 x naught raised to power 4 since x naught y naught is the assumed point of contact. Now if you look at the question it speaks of the equation of the tangent that passes through. So we need to form the equation of the tangent at this point and go further. So we say equation of the tangent at x naught y naught is y minus y naught equal to, we are going to consider this as the slope, 12x naught square minus 10x naught raised to power 4 into x minus x naught. Now this part is interesting. Remember the tangent passes through origin. So that means my y and my x are going to be 0 comma 0. The biggest mistake that students make over here is assuming your x naught and y naught to be 0. So, we would say since tangent passes through 0, 0, therefore we get minus y naught is equal to 12 x naught square minus 10 into x naught raised to power 4 into minus x naught. So, this implies your y naught is equal to 12 x naught cube minus 10 x naught raised to power 5. I mark this as equation 2. Remember our previous equation? Now we are going to solve these two equations to get our required points x naught and y naught. So equating the two we get 12 x naught cube minus 10 x naught raised to power 5 is equal to 4 x naught cube minus 2 x naught raised to power 5. This further implies 8 x naught cube is equal to 8 x naught raised to power 5. Please, please do not cancel out your x naught from here because nowhere in the question it's mentioned that x naught cannot be equal to 0. So, this means if I bring it to the left side and take x naught cube common, we are left with 1 minus x naught square. This implies x naught is either 0 or 1 or minus 1. So if x naught is equal to 0, this implies moving to any of the equations 1 or 2, let's say y naught is also going to be 0. If x naught is equal to say 1, then in that case y naught becomes 4 minus 2 which is 2 and in case your x naught is equal to minus 1, then this becomes minus 4 plus 2 which is minus 2. So, so we conclude the required points would be 0, 0, 1, 2 or minus 1, comma, minus 2. Please have a look at the entire question. Look at the second question over here. Show that the line touches the curve at the point where it crosses the y-axis. Very confusing. It's actually not. Let's try to first comprehend as what we want to do. So you have to show that the line touches this curve at the point where it crosses the y-axis. That means where the curve crosses the y-axis. So first of all, let's see what this point of contact becomes. So, so when the curve crosses the y-axis, the point becomes x equal to 0. So x is 0. We are going to substitute this x over here and this implies our y is going to be into e raised to power 0. So only b. So, so this is very crucial because your 0 comma b becomes the point of contact. Now all you need to do in the question is that you have to show the tangent because the word is touches. All we need to do over here is 
show that the equation of the tangent to this curve at this point happens to be this. Isn't that simple? Now, let's go ahead. So, taking the curve once again, let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. So, we get minus x by a into minus 1 by a. Now, dy by dx at the point of contact 0, comma b gives us minus b by a into e raised to power 0, which is only minus b by a. This becomes the slope of the tangent. So, now equation of the tangent is y minus y naught, which is b, is equal to m times, which is minus b by a, x minus x naught, which is 0. This implies ay minus ab is equal to minus bx, which means bx plus ay is equal to ab. The moment you divide throughout with ab, you get x by a plus y by b is equal to 1, which is the required answer. So now let's see. Thus, we have concluded that x by a plus y by b equal to 1 is the line which acts as a tangent to this curve at the point 0, comma b. Your third question says, prove that the given two curves touch each other at the point 1, comma 2. So, uh, first of all, let's get the point of intersection of these two curves and let's see how we go further. I can replace my y square with 4x here. This gives us x square minus 2x plus 1 is 0. Which means x minus 1 whole square is 0. So, x is 1. So, if I use x equal to 1 over... So, if I use x equal to 1 in this, we get y square is equal to 4 which gives us y is equal to plus minus 2. So we end up getting two points of intersection. We say points of intersection of the given two curves would be 1 comma 2 or 1 comma minus 2. Let's find the slope for each of them. So considering the first curve, if I differentiate, we get dy by dx is 2 by y. Similarly, taking the second curve, which is x square plus y square minus 6x plus 1 is 0. So, on differentiating, we get 2x plus 2y into dy by dx minus 6 is 0, which implies dy by dx is 6 minus 2x upon 2y. So, at 1 comma 2, if I call this as m1, your m1 becomes 2 upon 2 which is 1 and m2 becomes 6 minus 2 into 1 upon 2 into 2 which gives us 4 by 4 which is 1. Now m1 is also 1, m2 is also 1. What does that imply? So if I consider these two curves, let's say cutting at the point 1 comma 2, if m1 is 1, let's say this means the slope of the first tangent is 1. Similarly, the slope of the second tangent is also 1 and if they are passing through the same point, actually talks of that it is the same line. And if it is the same line, I can say that these two curves touch each other at 1, 2. That means they have the same tangent at 1, 2. Now, let's try to check for the point 1, minus 2. So at 1 comma minus 2 also your m1 is minus 1 and m2 is minus 1. So that means at both the points 1, 2 or 1 minus 2 the curves are touching each other. We just had to prove for 1, 2 which is already true. So this brings us to the end of tangents and normals. In no way I am saying these questions are enough. But then they surely give you an insight into the type of questions which could be asked. Do come back with your queries on this topic. Share your feedback in the comment section below. Like and share the video with your friends. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to my channel as it keeps me motivated to create more content for you. See you with a new video. Until then, bye-bye.